Hello friends, it's Astro here and welcome to a short Kerbal Space Program tutorial for people that are new at the game and um, are struggling maybe with a couple of the little concepts that you have to deal with here. Uh, there have been a few people that have tuned into my KSP streams on Twitch uh, where they've said, look, what you're doing is awesome and I really love watching it, but I don't really know how to get into space, to get into orbit. So I thought I'd lay out a couple of the basics here and hopefully they'll help you to be able to put together your first spacecraft if you haven't already and go from on the pad and lots of explosions to successfully making into orbit for the first time. So let's talk about orbit as the first thing we need to address here. What is an orbit? Well, an orbit is when your spacecraft, like this one here that I've created earlier, is essentially hurtling sideways across the planet fast enough that it doesn't hit the planet, right? If you were going slower, you would slowly crash into the planet's surface. But if you're going fast enough, you'll miss the planet. And then you'll keep missing the planet. And then you'll keep missing the planet as you go around and around. If you go too fast, you'll fly off into deep space. If you go too slow, you'll crash into the surface. It's this beautiful balance between not enough velocity and too much velocity where you can just be constantly circling around a celestial body. It's pretty awesome. Now this craft is running at an orbit of about 100 kilometers. Um, it's, let's see, at its lowest point, which is the periapsis, it's 9, uh, 99,185 meters. And at its highest point, or the apoapsis, it's 100 0.754 kilometers. Now, in order to achieve that, I'm running at 2,247 meters per second, and that will change. So when I get to the highest point, it'll actually be slightly slower. So let's uh, spin, oh, spin up here. So 2,243, whereas at the lowest point, if we move around here, We're moving slightly faster. So now we're moving at 2,248.7. So there are slight variances all over the place, but the long and the short of it is the orbit around Kerbin at about this altitude is about 2,248 meters per second. So with that in mind, you might be tempted to go back to the vehicle assembly building here and say, right, well, I'm going to build a ship that has exactly 2,248 meters per second, right? I've got a capsule, I've got a parachute, I've got two tanks here. This one's not quite full, just so that I could hit that magic number. And then we've got a swivel engine sitting on the bottom here, right? And according to the clock, it says that I've got 2,247 meters per second. That's close enough. Well, what happens when we launch this? So if we take this out to the launch pad, I've got a mod installed called MechJeb2. Now, I use MechJeb for a lot of testing and um, finagling around with things. It's a really excellent mod. And one of the, the features of this mod is this guy, the flight recorder. And I think this is going to be really handy because what I'll do is I'll turn on orbital speed, which is we want to get that to 2,240 whatever meters per second. But it also lets us track how much of our delta v and remember delta v is the change in velocity so with 2253 meters per second i can go from zero to 2253 meters per second with what's in this rocket but that's in absolute ideal circumstances it doesn't take into account gravity which is always acting on this rocket so gravity is always pulling it down at 9.8 meters per second per second. So every second we're in flight and we're fighting against gravity, we're losing 9.8 meters per second. We've got drag loss, which is as we're moving through the atmosphere, there are aerodynamic pressures that are pushing against the rocket, which are simulated correctly here in Kerbal Space Program, that slow the rocket down and you've got to fight against that. And the hard part is the harder you fight against the atmosphere, the higher your drag. And the less smooth your rocket is, the higher your drag. So if you've got fins sticking out all over the place to keep you steady, 
you're going to be creating more gra- drag and you're going to be you know losing more velocity to that level um and finally there's steering loss but that's uh we won't go too much into that one fun thing to note though if you look at my orbit info window up here i can see that my apoapsis is 76 meters because i'm sitting on the deck and my periapsis is look basically nowhere because i'm not orbiting right now but i do actually already have some orbital speed 175 meters per second in the 90 degree direction on the nav ball. And that's because the planet is spinning on its axis at 175 meters per second. So we get that for free. Because we're launching from the equator, that kind of automatically gets added. But all of these losses, when we launch, you'll see what that, ha- what that does. So I'm gonna use the autopilot system that's built into MechJeb 2 to perform the launch on my behalf. I don't want to be messing around with this and I want it to have a precise launch every single time. You can use this yourself, but it's more fun to do it on your own. So here we go. Let's engage the autopilot. I'm going to fire up the first stage and away we go. Now, first of all, we're going to notice that the log just shoots straight up because, well, nothing's kind of happening at the moment. It's when we start pitching over that we start generating our numbers. So we can see here, we are getting some steering loss, but that should flatten out relatively quickly. We are getting some drag loss, and that's starting to move up. It's at about 20, 30 meters per second, thereabouts. We are getting some gravity loss, which is the green line, and that's approaching 200 meters per second. We're losing a lot of energy fighting against gravity. If we were taking off from a moon, like the moon or Minmus, gravity loss is next to nothing because the gravity of those bodies is very, very low. But Kerbin, which is, I mean, it's not as big as uh, gravitationally wise as the Earth. Well, actually it is. It's 9.8 meters per second, but it's not actually the same size. Yeah, it's confusing. Don't worry about it. What we need to worry about here is we need to get this orbital speed to 2,248 meters per second in order to to succeed at getting this 100 kilometer orbit. But because of all these losses, watch what happens. So we've finished the first burn and we're now coasting towards our secondary burn. And the secondary burn in a standard ascent profile like this is where you burn through that first phase You coast until you get to the highest point of your orbit, which is the apoapsis. And once you're there, you do a second burn to circularize that orbit and get you all the way to uh, orbital velocity. But there's a problem. We've mapped out this node and we need to add another 745 meters per second to get our velocity up to orbital speed, but we only have 250 meters per second left in the fuel tank. So, Where did the rest of that energy go? Well, first of all, there's gravity loss, which, you know, that topped out at about 480 meters per second or thereabouts. Drag loss, that's at about 120 meters per second. And then steering loss, it's actually fairly high at about 240. What we need to do is just account for those additional losses. So if we take them and sum them up, those three types of loss together tally up to, let's say, 850. I'll add a little bit extra for budget. Now, this says 496. It'd be tempting to sour up, well, I just need to add 496, but I can see that there are other drag factors at play here. So let's go back and mess around with this thing. I'm going to revert the flight back to the launch, uh, back to vehicle assembly. And what we'll do is we'll change this from being 2247 to 2247 plus about 850. The easiest way to do that is pull this bottom stage off and we'll start making a multi-stage rocket. Now multi-stage rockets are better because as you go through the flight, you can drop empty mass. So when we get up to do that circularization burn, we can get rid of this heavy section down the bottom here and get rid of this heavy engine and then do the final burn with something that's much 
lighter and more efficient. So let's see. Instead of the swivel, I'll grab myself the Terrier. The Terrier is a great upper stage engine to do your circularizations. Now, here's one big thing to note. At the moment, this says that I've got 404 meters per second of delta V in this stage. But if we look in here, that's at sea level, 404. But I know that I'm gonna be doing this burn in a vacuum. So if I select vacuum here, it says that I've got 1,639 meters per second. Much better. In fact, it's gonna be so much better, I'm gonna change this fuel tank out for a slightly smaller one because I reckon this is all we're gonna need. There you go, 950. You know what? I'll do what I said I was gonna do. I'll take it down to 850, 780, 866. Perfect. So this should be enough to do our circularization burn. Now all I want to do is look at this bottom stage, which I'll put down here. And I want to change this bottom stage so that it is going to be that first 2248. At the moment, it's 1826 because we've got extra mass above it that we're trying to punch through the atmosphere. So let's get another one of these FLT 800 big boy fuel tanks and there we go, 2493. We could probably strip a little bit of mass out of that. 24, 2261. That's looking good. Maybe one more. 2247. Perfect. Right on the money. So we've replicated that same initial launch, launch velocity. But now we've got this extra stage up the top here that's going to do the final circularization Plus, it's going to make up for all of that mass, uh, sorry, all of that velocity that we lost fighting against gravity, drag, and steering. So let's see how this flies. And again, we're going to use our flight recorder to look at orbital speed, steering loss, drag loss, gravity loss. Now, I would expect gravity loss to be slightly higher this time. And the reason I would expect that is because the mass of our vessel is slightly higher, but we'll see. So let's see how this vessel flies with some additional Delta V on board. If we engage our autopilot, tap to launch, and away we go. Now one big thing while this launch is underway that I want to talk about is the ascent profile. Technically, the easiest way to get into orbit is to go straight up until you hit 100 kilometers and then turn 90 degrees and point, you know, sideways across the planet and burn that way. It's technically not as efficient as this ascent profile. The ascent profile here is always, as you start going, get to about a thousand meters and then you start turning over ever so gently. You don't want to push too far you want to slowly start pushing yourself towards 45 degrees. And the reason for that is you want to keep that apoapsis and you can see it building up here, 11 kilometers, 12 kilometers. You want to keep it so that when you start traveling faster than about 1200 meters per second, that's going to be fairly high in the atmosphere. And when I say fairly high, I mean yeah, above sort of 20 kilometers because below that you're going to start to get hypersonic heating. Essentially, the friction of the air against the aircraft is going to start causing problems where your spacecraft may explode mildly. So yeah, aim to get your sort of hypersonic speeds around, in this case, 30 kilometers. Now you can see there are some heating effects, but you won't see the temperature gauges go crazy on this craft. They may pop up a little bit, but essentially, we're high enough for the air to be sparse enough that we're not gonna have any major problems with temperature. So here we are, we've talked our way through the first burn. The engines are shutting down. We're doing about 1700 kilometers with an apoapsis of 100. It's the perfect place we wanna be. Gravity loss this time, it is a little bit higher. It's gone up to about 500 meters per second. 
drag loss yeah, about 120, the same as last time. And then steering loss is uh, a little higher as well, a little over 300. So I'm glad that we built a little extra budget in. Let's see, it was, let's see if that extra budget was enough. So there's 73 meters per second left in the first stage. And when we set up our next burn, uh, we are going to get the indicator here. So there's stage four, which is this bottom engine, and then stage two, which is this top engine, and a total burn of 672.1 meters per second, meaning we're gonna pull 73 meters per second out of this tank and about 600 meters per second out of the upper tank. So what does that mean? Well, it means that my budget was a little over what I actually needed. But you know what? It's better to have a little bit more in the tank than not quite enough. And there we have it. A beautiful orbit. 101 by 98. So not exactly circular, but you know what? It's, it's near enough. Um, and it's very close to our companion craft over here. It's doing 2247, we're doing 2246. So that, my friends, is a very basic craft, a very basic ascent profile, and you don't need MechJeb to do what you need to do, but it really does help. If you're trying to fine tune and diagnose your craft, go check it out. So friends, thank you very much for your time. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that it's useful if you're just learning the game. And uh, if you've got any questions, jump below and ask. And uh, as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you thought it was terrible, give it a thumbs down. And subs are always welcome. Thanks, friends. I'll see you next time.